We all probably know what 73 means, but what about 44? Choking your end fed half wave. And how do I tune a linked end fed half wave this time on KMRD Radio Stuff? What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Mailbag Monday. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, Shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured on an upcoming episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, we have three tantalizing questions for us today, so let's dive right in. This first viewer is asking, I watch your videos and enjoy them. Thank you. Your enthusiasm is refreshing. Thank you. I enjoy hunting POTA stations and so far have over 500 parks strictly CW. Wow. Occasionally, someone will send along the usual 73 or 72, the number 44, send along with that. I've been a ham for 54 years. That's longer than I've been alive. (laughs) And my buddy, uh, a few years longer. Over the years, we've heard uh, any number of different codes for different items. A cold 807 comes to mind. I have no idea what that means, but neither of us knows... What is meant by the number 44? Do you know what it means? No, I don't. But fortunately, a quick Google search will probably uh, give us some results. So let's head over to the internet machine. So a simple ham radio number codes Google search brings up all kinds of results. But I'm going to go here. It's actually a couple things I found. We're going to go to Wikipedia because everybody knows you can trust Wikipedia. So 73, best regards. I've never heard 72. I don't know what that is. But if we look here, 44 is answer promptly by wire. Now, this is back from the days. uh, These are from like the railroad guys that were using telegraph. Uh, And I guess over time, uh, the telegraph rules changed a little bit. Uh, So we have 44 meaning answer quick. So maybe he's saying uh, 73, which means, uh, where is it? Uh, Best regards. So best regards, answer quickly. Maybe he wants you to answer back to his best regards quickly. Don't don't waste his time. You've already had the cue, so don't waste any more of his time. He's ready to move on. (laughs) I don't know. That's kind of weird. Another thing I found, though, that might be more relevant today was from the Worldwide Flora and Fauna website. And they say, uh, this they have a question. I often heard, uh, an often heard question for Worldwide Flora and Fauna-ers, always end a QSO with 44. The first four stands for the four wind directions, northeast, south, and west. And the second four stands for the elements, earth, water, air, and fire. Who knows which one is right? Who knows which one they're using? Who knows? But that's about all I could find on on the 44. That that seems a little antiquated to me. Send quickly, send promptly by wire. I don't know. So we've answered your question, and I still don't know the answer. (laughs) I like the worldwide flora and fauna one, though. Uh, and I think isn't isn't Ham Alert when you get a when you get a POTA spot on Ham Alert, isn't it? Doesn't it say, uh, say in CW forty four? I'm pretty sure it does. So that that would explain why it says forty four in Ham Alert. I'm gonna go with the worldwide flora and fauna's uh, definition. But any of you old timer CW guys, uh, let us know. Do you use forty four for any in, in a in a in a salutation? Why do you use it? What does it really mean other than send quickly by wire? Yeah, that was a weird one. I don't know, but hey, we got to kind of learn something. Next, we have a question about the Pac-10. He says, I've watched all of your Pac-10 videos I can find and still have a question for you. That's good. Do you ever use the RF choke in line with your coax anywhere? Well, you need to watch some of my Parks on the Air videos. I'm planning on running my 2040 NFED half wave at 100 watts with the 891 and wondered what you recommend choke-wise. I'm planning on activating from the van down by the river <laughs> with, the, with the feed point attached to the rear bumper and wire into a tree. 
Well, you're going to have plenty of time to activate ham radio when you're living in a van down by the river. So, yes. Yes, I do. Uh, not always, but usually. So, in in my uh, Gigaparts Explorer bag that I typically use for parks on the air, by the way, 5% off if you want a Gigaparts Explorer bag. Absolutely love it. It's so comfortable. It's awesome. You, get, you can buy these little extra pouches here. So what is inside of this varies a little bit depending on what I'm doing. So for example, I've got some uh, RG316 in here from ABR Industries right now. And if you'll notice, ABR Industries, if you get their coax, they can custom make you coax with a choke already on it. So this choke is like right at the end of the feed line here. So you can put... Uh, you can connect this to your antenna and then have the choke like right at your radio. Uh, but I don't always use this. A lot of times I use Messi and Poloni cable. Uh, so I always in this bag have one of these. This is an inline choke that you'll often see in my videos if I show the back of the radio. And again, this is all these come from ABR Industries. And they don't actually just sell this on the website. You need to make it. But So I've got this. Uh, I've actually got like two of kind of the exact same thing. And then I've got one that's a little longer they made for me when I went to their facility uh, just a, a few weeks ago. I also have this little guy. So this is RG316 with five ferrites on it, BNC male to a BNC female there. And then I also have this one from Pactena that's an inline uh, choke where you just plug your coax into one side and coax in another. Maybe you have this in the middle of your run. You could have this closer to the radio, uh, whatever. But with an NFED, you typically want the choke to be closer to your radio because unless you're using a counterpoise, which I never do, your coax, the shield of the coax acts as a counterpoise. So I don't want to choke that off at the antenna. So I always put these at the uh, radio. So how do you get one of these chokes from ABR? Well, that's a great question. Let's hop over to their website and I will show you exactly how it's stupid easy. So if we go to abrind.com, we're going to go over here to product information. We're going to go to this amateur radio coax builder. Now here, there's just a few steps. So we need to select what kind of coax we want. So I just had uh, RG316, which they just call ABR316. If you want uh, LMR 400 Ultraflex. It's ABR 400 Ultraflex. They got, I mean, everything. Whatever, whatever kind of coax ABR carries, you can get a choke made out of that. So let's just say um, we want ABR 240 Ultraflex. Um, I'm not sure what the. Oh, here it is. ABR 240 Ultraflex, which is going to be this one here. So now we've selected the cable. Now we need to say, okay, well, how long do we want it? Uh, you could get one foot, you could get two foot. So let's say we want a two foot jumper and this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we want a two foot length of coax. Here we're gonna pick our connector. So because we're gonna use this as a jumper, we're gonna want, uh, I need a, a, a PL259, but if you wanted something with BNC, you can do that. You can get whatever kind of end connector, SMA, whatever you want, they, they have it all. So I want a, a UHF, Male, you can do solder to solder. You can do solder crimp. I'll do solder crimp. Okay, so there's that connector. And then we want a, I want a UHF female. So we've got a female on one side and a male on another. And then if you want to personalize your heat shrink tubing, you know, you can put your call sign on there if you want. Uh, that way you know it's yours. But right here where it says ferrites, you can go none, you can go three, five, or seven. Let's do seven. So we're making this uh, this piece right here. So 5837, you get a two foot run of LMR 240 with some nice connectors on it and seven ferrites. Hit add to cart, 5837, done and done. You buy it, they mail it out to you. That's simple. If you have questions, just call them. They are fantastic people. They're very easy to work with. And they will, they will help you figure out exactly what you need, even if you don't know what you need. So, And then same thing for if you wanted a whole length of coax. If you wanted that LMR240, 
say you want 50 feet of LMR 240, this is 50 feet of RG 316, you'd simply select 50 feet of LMR 240, put whatever connectors on it, maybe you want uh, PL 259s on both sides, that way you don't need a jumper, if that's gonna be like your main cable, then you can have the ferrite on the cable itself so you don't need a jumper. I kind of like to use these jumpers personally because I use a lot of different coax in the field. One day I might be using RG316. One day I might be using uh, Hyperflex 5 from Messi and Poloni. One day I might be using Ultraflex 7 Sahara from Messi and Poloni. So just having these jumpers to me is better, but it's whatever you want. They, they got options. So yes, I, I typically uh, follow the rule ABC, always be choking. <laughs> Just a, just a good practice to be in. So thanks for writing in, and now you know the proper choking protocol. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, we have a question about tuning an NFED half wave. This viewer writes, Mike, I just got my Pac-10 a linked NFED half wave. I want to mod it to cover 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6, so I'll have an all-in-one NFED half wave, hopefully. Uh, well, what about 20 and 40? Uh, question, wort how you cut your linked sections. Example, I could cut a 20 meter section at the right spot and insert the banana plug and have 20 meters and 17, but there would be no strain relief. If I loop the ends of these sections, that changes the tunings, right? Yes, it does. So overall, each section needs to be longer than the electrical length to allow for the loops and connector tails. Yes. So how do you go about tuning these sections? Do you tune by folding back and then using the fold back portion for the loops and connector tails? Is it that simple? I don't know if I'd say I fold back. I would say I really don't fold back, but I do leave a little bit of slack, we'll call it. Watch your vids, but this part was getting uh, by me somehow. So let's hop over on the bench. It's pretty easy. Now, if you're gonna do a 10, 6, 12, 15, 17, 20, and 40, I presume, you need to think how you want to make that antenna and, and how you're going to deploy it. Do you want links for literally every single band because you don't need them? Realistically, to do it with the least amount of links, you'd need a, you'd need a link for six meters. So you'd need to start with a six meter. Then you would need a 12 meter link. Then you would need a 17 meter link, then a 20 meter link, and then a 40 meter link because you're gonna get 10 off of 20 and you're gonna get 15 off of 40. So you really don't need to make links uh, for 10 and 15. You can if you want, you just don't need to. So to answer your question on how I tune them, let's hop over on the bench and, and I can show you better than I can tell you. So the first thing you need to do is, let's assume you're starting with your 17 meter element. You gotta strip off enough wire to be at least the length of 17 meters, but you always want to go longer. So for example, the 17, a half wave on 17 meters is approximately 7.9 meters long, or about 25 feet 11 inches. So I would first cut this wire to about 26 and a half feet. You can even go 27 if you want. It's always better to have too much than too little, okay? Next, I use these little S beaners. There's a link to my Amazon store in the description where you can get these things. But these are great for a number of reasons. One, uh, so when I'm tuning an antenna, this is only temporary what, when I do this. I'm gonna snake this wire through these holes because I have a temporary strain relief right here, okay? So let's just say I cut this wire 27 feet. We know we, we really wanna be probably 25 foot 11 inches, something like that, okay? This is the end of the wire. I'm gonna use this second loop at the end of the day when this is all tuned, that's gonna be where my loop is, okay? So when I take this out, I'll, I'll probably just kinda of kink it a little bit to know where that loop is. We'll get rid of this guy. All right, so now I know this right here is where I'm eventually gonna make my loop and I'm gonna crimp it, okay? So the way I do this, regardless of the length of the wire, this could be 100 feet long and I'm tuning it for 17 meters, okay? Because I need a strain relief and I'm linking this, so I need this part to dangle down and connect to another wire, 
I always want, and this is just my way of doing things, about three inches, and I'll actually bring a tape measure into the field when I do this, and I just so happen to have uh, three inches on this one, okay? So I want three inches of tagline hanging off at all times. Now, when I, when I string this up, it's 27 feet. We know it's long. I know it's going to be low. It'll probably be somewhere in the 17 megahertz, so I'll need to trim it. So when I trim this, I don't, I don't fold anything back. I'm not twisting wires, okay? That's just the way I do it. So I know I need to trim it. So I'm going to say, all right, well, let's trim off three inches. So I'm going to feed uh, this wire through here. Get, we're going we're gonna to get rid of this, okay? Now I know I need to cut off three inches. So I'm going to cut right here, all right? Gone. Now we just trimmed that off. Then I'm gonna feed this back through. Okay, that's too short, so I know I need to push a little more wire through. So I always have that three inches at the end. And if you need to cut off six inches, then feed six inches through, whatever. The idea is that you always have this three inches. If you want four inches, do it four inches. If you want two inches, do it two inches. It doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. You only need enough strain relief to go from this side of the uh, carabiner to this side of the carabiner with a little link that goes right there. So at the end of the day, that is what it looks like. So you can see I don't use these holes at the end of the day. I have a little crimp and I've done videos on how to make these. So if I wanna take this off, I can do that. Um, I can I can uh, say I only want to run 20 meters as a vertical. This is the 40 meter. So here's the here's the feed point. And any time, so the wire coming from the feed point is always a male for me, and and the wire going towards the next link is always a female or the or the plug, excuse me. So that's how they're done. But you're just feeding through. You know, so I'm using, I'm just using these holes as strain relief temporarily. Then once I have it cut permanently, I know, okay, there's my loop. All right, I know where it is. Now I'm gonna make that loop. I'm gonna slide this ferrule over. I'm gonna crimp it, okay? And you gotta leave enough room to have, you know, so it can go through the, uh, the carabiner there. And then I'll solder on my banana plugs and I bring my soldering iron out in the field with me when I'm doing this. I can power it through my uh, battery box, but you can do this in your yard, whatever. And that's how I do it. And you just do it one link at a time. So when I built this, this is not the wire that comes with the Pac-10. I took the wire off. I started with the 17 meter element, which was say 25 feet, 10 inches. I'm just making it up, cut your own, start long, trim it down. And then I added, it's like another eight feet of link to connect it together to get 20 meters. And then this is the end of, this is the end of the 20 meter element. This is the beginning of the 40 meter element. And it's about 10 meters long and that's all you get. And then at the very end of this, I'll give you a pro tip here. That is the end of the 40 meter element. I do just have it snaked through here. And I also drilled a hole in this carabiner. They, these don't come, whoops, with holes in it. See, there's a brand new carabiner. I drill a hole in there so I can slide it over my mast and about six inches down it stops so I don't need to uh, worry about having anything extra to hang it with. I can just use the carabiner itself to hang it. So. so there you go. Hopefully that answers your question and now you will be a pro at tuning your linked and fed half wave. And guys, if you have an amateur radio related question for me, don't be afraid to shoot me an email. K at MRD at iCloud.com and you may have a question answered on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again on another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys. Shh. Satan's sleeping. He's got your belly. He's got your belly. Yeah, he sleeps upside down. <laughs>